there's really no difference in murder rates between areas that have capital punishment and those that don't. Taking away something that's meant to deter this crime from happening will actually reduce that crime. It's almost like saying, well, if we just banned deadbolts, burglaries should go down. I mean, how many people do we have to kill before people stop killing? How expensive of an electric bill does it take to kill someone versus putting them away for 50 years? Well, that's because it's never that simple. It's not like, you know, a 20 cent bullet that you shoot somebody in the head and they're dead. If you steal money from somebody or take somebody's property from them, I, I think that's something that's reversible. You could either return the property or pay them back for the loss of it. Um, but you can't bring back a life. And the punishment for any crime whatsoever was castration. Welcome to another Kitchen Sink Microscopy. I'm Casey Rochford. And I'm Eric Rosenblatt. And uh, don't forget that we write our own music, so stick around to the end of the episode and check out what we got to offer. And, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe. Uh, become a patron on patreon.com slash ksmvidcast. That would be great if you want to support the, the work that we do. Um, yeah, so... What do you got for us today, Casey? Well, uh, as of today's recording, we are just a few days out from the news that uh, Attorney General Barr has reinstated the federal death penalty. Um, hmm. And some states have been doing the, the death penalty uh, anyway. So there's like this, you know, States do whatever they're going to do, but then like federal prisons, I guess, haven't been doing this for the last 16 years or so. Yeah. Yeah. And before that, it was banned up until like the 1970s uh, on this, on the grounds of being un unconstitutional. And then they overturned that. So that's kind of like the, the short summary history of where the federal death penalty has been going. So now it's making a comeback and it's creating an uproar. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, what Now, you know, I, I know that there are states that have their own rules on the death penalty, um, but I'm never quite clear on the whole federal thing, how that exactly works. I, you know, maybe, maybe uh, you know. Well, I think, I, you know, I'm no, like, judicial branch expert or anything but i think if your crime is on a federal level like uh for instance one of the few people that has actually been executed on the federal level in uh the time span up leading up to 2003 or whenever they uh took it away uh one of the few was timothy mcveigh okay who, who was uh even though his one act was in uh, Oklahoma or whatever, it was yeah. a federal building. So his act of terrorism on a federal building landed him in a federal prison on federal death, death row. And Okay. Yeah, actually, he, he'd be an interesting, that whole situation would be interesting to talk about sometime as his own episode because uh, that's, a, that's a really fascinating thing. Um, Okay, well, that, that, that actually, that makes a little bit more sense now. Um, yeah, I, you know, I kind of have my own thoughts on this. Um, I mean, it, I'm sure we, there's a lot of things about the, the reinstatement or the, the continued uh, fluctuation between having 
capital punishment or not, how it kind of like comes and goes. Um, but as far as just the, the principle of it, like what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts, I'm a little bit on the fence. So a lot of the uproar that I'm hearing <clears throat> is that, uh, number one, there's a lot of people uh, gravely concerned with this particular federal administration deciding who lives and dies. And two, uh, there's a lot of people claiming that there's no point in killing people on death row because it doesn't statistically show any evidence that it's a deterrent to murder. Yeah, actually, <clears throat> that's that's definitely true. There have been multiple studies that have found that, you know, it there's really no difference in murder rates between areas that have capital punishment and those that don't. It's like it's statistically insignificant. That's true. And uh, there's actually also studies that have shown. Uh, I don't know if I want to say shown. There there are studies that are claiming that not having the death penalty lowered murder rates. Yeah, I, I, I've heard some things. I mean, you know, it's, it's probably isolated things, so you can't really count the outliers as uh, really something that important. But there are cases where people have... Where, I, I know what you're talking about, where um, there have been suggestions that, that perhaps the death penalty actually encourages murder, because for one, it sort of, I, I guess it kind of justifies. It's, yeah, yeah, that's a hard one for me to, to wrap my head around because on one hand, you're saying the death penalty has no impact on uh, the rate of murder. And then on the other hand, you're saying, well, taking away the death penalty has this positive impact. And right off the bat there, I'm seeing that you're treating the same uh, variable differently depending on which outcome you, you're seeing. Yeah. So already you've got this selection bias thing going on. Yep. And then this is largely like so many factors go into whether or not a person is going to murder someone. For, for one thing, that's a huge, huge deal. Like not, not a light topic whatsoever. No. <laughs> And it's not, it's not like, am I going to have a sandwich today? Yeah. It's, it's like, am I going to kill someone today? A little different. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, if you're going to, yeah, that, that, that's a good point. And, cool. and I think some of there, there is a little bit of bias in, in some of these studies. Yeah. Um, the other point I want to make from that is that you're, you're drawing this conclusion from this correlation. Okay. Um, Maybe you've got a good argument for it, but it, it sounds a little weird because you're saying taking away something that's meant to deter this crime from happening will actually reduce that crime. It's almost like saying, well, if we just banned deadbolts, burglaries should go down, right? <laughs> you know, because... Well, you know, that's an interesting point, but it, you know, I, I think maybe they could be, they could be correct because the intent of legislation doesn't necessarily yield the results um so the, the, you could say yeah we're doing this to deter people from doing that thing but just merely intending to do that and believing that something is going to have that effect doesn't make it automatically have that effect there are there are more complexities going on and so i think they could be correct. I, I don't know. Um, you know, it, yeah, that, that, that's kind of an iffy one, but there's enough studies. There's, there, it's not just one, one study there. There've been multiple studies that kind of say, well, it's, it's really, there's nothing conclusive basically is what, what the, yeah. the answer is. It, it, there's things that go one way a little bit and the other way a little bit, but nothing really definitive saying yes, indeed, Capital punishment absolutely reduces the murder rate. It's undeniable. Like, there have been nothing, there's, there's, there's nothing like that. Well, there hasn't really been a big sample size. Uh, <laughs> not, not that many people have been actually put to death in, in the scheme of things. And yeah, uh, yeah but so, does the number, 
it's it's the show of of killing somebody. You know, I mean, you know, we don't do public at executions anymore, but supposedly the concept is there are yes, there's like only a few people being put to death, um, but that's supposed to be so scary uh, that nobody's going to do it. I mean, otherwise, why would we bother? I mean, how many people do we have to kill before people stop killing? You know, <laughs> so it's, 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 I. Well, there, there's so many factors. It's like a, a large number of murders are, are probably being committed by people who um, actually just don't understand right from wrong. So, you know, uh, consequences like that mm-hmm. probably don't phase them in the least bit anyway. That's true. But, yeah. but maybe it's deterring, uh, you know, things that you wouldn't know are even happening like a uh, crime of passion. Maybe somebody is like about to do something and then thinks, I don't want to die. You know, like I'll get caught, whatever. Uh, I'll just cool my jets. Who knows if, you know, but it's really hard to, to look inside everyone's head and, and know what's affecting their thinking. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, you've got, You've got a lot of sick people who, uh, and we've talked about this in our like prison reform discussion, uh, the confusion over corrections. And uh, you, you get these people that uh, are sometimes maybe not capable of actual reform. Like you can put them away forever or you can threaten them with death by electric chair or whatever the punishment might be and they'll just keep reoffending or or whatever and it's like maybe the death penalty isn't so much there to deter as it is to weed out the population that's already overcrowded like yeah i mean that's the thing i think if if that is the case if we're going to employ that sort of reasoning we have to be very very careful about Oh yeah. How and why we do these things. It can't be something that's indiscriminate. Like, Oh, you know, you've killed 10 people, therefore death by execution. I I think we have to be very cautious about that because it, it it could go the wrong way really fast. If that's the case, you know, um, and and that, yeah, that does the potential of uh, executing an innocent person because we get it wrong a lot. (laughs) Uh, More often than people realize, I think, um, there have been, I've been just recently read about a few cases of somebody finally being released as an innocent person because they were wrongfully imprisoned a long time ago. And it happens quite often. And, and the thing is, so if we can make a mistake like that, we could probably make a mistake that, that results in somebody being wrongfully executed. And, you know, I, I don't think that's right, but and the, 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 what you'd said earlier kind of goes into the whole idea of like, is, is the criminal justice system there to be a force for rehabilitation or one for punishment? You know, because I do feel like the part of me feels a lot like the executing people for these sorts of capital crimes is kind of like punishment. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily the right course of action. Um, you know, this is eye for an eye kind of thing, like, uh, which we've talked about because logically it, it, if, if you follow it through all possible crimes, it could result in some pretty bizarre punishments. Yeah. Not, not only bizarre punishments, but where does it actually end? You know, yeah. like. Who who's the final arbiter of justice? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's it's all in the eye of, of the beholder uh, to some degree. That's true. That is definitely true. You know, and I, it's I, I have I have so many thoughts on this. This is because this is a complex thing. I, I don't think it's like cut and dried. Maybe to some people it is, but I think if you start to rationally analyze it it becomes a little bit more gray and confusing and there's, there's a lot of different circumstances. And so here, here we are talking about it as a result of that. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I think to some people where it's cut and dry that we should not be executing anyone. Uh, I find it odd that a lot of the times these are the same people who will gladly walk up to a complete stranger and punch them in the face because they've been labeled as a, a neo-Nazi or something. Yeah. No evidence necessarily just hearsay punch yeah. somebody, you know, like judge jury executioner, boom, right there on the street. Uh, and when it comes to somebody who's been convicted of a heinous crime, uh, some, you know, disgusting, gruesome murder of a child, rape, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And they're like, no, nah, we shouldn't kill them. We should spend tax money to keep them alive for the rest of their life and give them opportunities yeah. to escape and all this stuff. You know? <laughs> it does seem rather hypocritical. Um, yeah. Logically speaking. I, yeah. And I, yeah, thinking about it too, I think like, well, it, if, if the purpose is punishment and not rehabilitation, wouldn't you think that lifetime imprisonment is a greater punishment than execution? Because if you think about it, if you That's kill unfair. somebody, well, if you kill somebody, they're free. You've freed them from any obligation to do anything else in the future. They're gone. That's it. They, they can't be rehabilitated, of course. They're dead. Um, they can't provide any kind of restitution. They're dead. Um, you, that's it. The, and, and so I kind of feel like sticking somebody in a cage for the rest of their life might be, might be a greater punishment. Um, and, and I think if you look at it, some say that the cost of you know, execution is higher. Some say it's lower and there's all kinds of different data supporting it from different angles. But at the end of the day, I think it's kind of the same. So yeah, I mean, how theme. how expensive of an electric bill does it take to kill someone versus putting them away for fifty years? Well, years? that's because it's never that simple. It's not like you know a twenty cent bullet that you shoot somebody in the head and they're dead, or you know you flip a switch and you use uh, a, a fraction of a, a kilowatt or something to to put them put them down. No, there's there's a huge process. There's all this legal shit that has to happen and you know, processes and it, it's all kinds of, it's a huge mess. And it's very expensive. So it, it is kind of costly and that's just because of the way we do things, which I think yeah. is probably good because we should probably be very, very certain oh, that, yeah. that this person that we're killing actually did do what they did. And we're not just like making assumptions, but that's why it's expensive. So, you know, now, on the other hand, maybe that's why it's not really so much of a deterrent is because you, you probably are thinking, gee, my chances of winding up on death row might be pretty high, but the chances of me actually getting executed, <laughs> mm. probably not going to happen and certainly won't happen quickly. Well, that's yeah. a good point. I mean, you can just look at the numbers and, and you can just appeal and appeal and appeal almost indefinitely. I mean, they, oh. they do cap it somewhere, but yeah, uh, even, even then you're like queued up and yeah. And the process isn't like something like, yeah, a quick and speedy trial is a thing of the past. So it, it, you could be, you know, going at it for decades potentially. That's another reason that they need to do away with these victimless crimes and stuff because that's clogging up courts as well as prisons. Oh, it, it very much is. Yeah, it's it, taking up time from really serious stuff. So yeah, yeah, we should absolutely be ignoring all the bullshit things and focus on the stuff that that like you know, twenty people were murdered by somebody or something like that's a little bit more important than somebody smoking pot, right? or or selling it even or whatever. Um, that's a good point. You know, and, and I think about this too. Like, well, uh, th this is something that that like just kind of kind of just randomly popped into my head, but is killing a murderer long after the fact, let's, let's say it's somebody that, that was convicted and found guilty of murdering one or more people, is killing a murderer long after the fact, like years later, not itself premeditated murder? Because this isn't, this isn't a response. Like you're, you're not, 
you don't see somebody killing somebody and kill them to stop more killing from happening or, or, or whatever. You're not immediately responding to the incident. This is years later. And then you finally decide to kill that person. How is that not murder? That's a great philosophical question. I've, I've wondered that myself before. Um, like, why is murder okay in the hands of the state or in the hands of the police? You know, I, you know, I, would, I would personally, I'd say it's never okay, but you know. <laughs> no, but uh, like uh, actions speak louder than words. So obviously, sure. like, if you're wearing a badge, you can get away with murder, like, plain and simple. Yeah. You know, uh, and the same with, same with the state. Like, if they say this is illegal and the sentence is death and we're going to kill you. It's, yeah, you're right. I mean, you could argue that that is premeditated murder. It's, uh... Especially in light of the fact that, that the, the crimes themselves are arbitrary, like legislation isn't, it, they can just make something up. Like a knife that's too long is illegal. Like, you know, they, one day they just decide and the decree comes down and suddenly now you're a felon or yeah. something, you know? <laughs> Yeah, obviously, there's a d difference between a long knife and, and killing somebody. But nevertheless, I mean, the result is still the same. Like, the legislation is pretty much arbitrary. So, yeah. And then, you know, who knows what's next? Like, they could come out with something where, you know, like maybe a, one of these social justice warriors, like, passes a law where the uh, prisoner has to identify as a murderer before you can put them to death. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there, there, there's a, a group of people. Um, some, some people out there believe that merely uh, saying something or doing something that makes a person feel bad is akin to violence. So if that kind of connection is made, then it isn't really that big of a leap into actual murder happening simply by saying something. And... Yeah, you're right. Like the, the the slippery slope kind of thing kind of applies there. Actually, that it's actually possible. It's a scary yeah. thought. Yeah, I I do share some of the concern um, with, uh, with you know this particular administration. Um, you know they've they've selected five people so far, uh, all of them murderers and rapists and child rapists and uh, one of them was a white supremacist which may be there for a little bit of show uh, trying to build some credibility or something could be uh, but uh, yeah but you know that's that's all pretty well justified I guess I mean these are already people on death row so it's been determined through due process that these people you know should eventually when it becomes legal again be put to death so I mean that that is the, the law as as it's going to be. Yeah. And but yeah, it's it is I, I I can totally see the argument where it's it's just wrong to kill people. <laughs> but but um you know you you do have to defend people sometimes. I mean if if somebody just decided, "Oh, I'm going to kill everyone until I'm stopped." <laughs> they need to be stopped, right? I mean, that's well, sure, yeah. all those other people. <clears throat> and and I think it's it, it it can be through analysis. It, it can be determined whether somebody's going to do that or not. I mean, if someone's killed one per or murdered one person, um, you can't draw a conclusion they're going to continue to murder. But if there's say a serial killer that's that's murdered thirty people, uh, well there's not really an indication that they have this kind of finite timeline as far as their killings are concerned. So you could, and yeah, but again, it's like, man, I, I got a lot of, I don't think it's really black and white in, in this case. Yeah. It's like, it, as far as my understanding goes, you can only receive the death penalty for murder, right? Is that, is that your understanding as well? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, yeah, I, I so, think so. So I can kind of see that. I mean, that is like the ultimate crime because it's like the damage cannot be undone. 
Like, yeah, it's absolutely permanent. Yeah, arguably <laughs> any any other crime can be uh, overcome with therapy or, you know, at the very least you can say, like, life goes on and yeah, uh, things can always improve. Yeah, though though there may be some damage, you can yeah continue like, on. You've still got a chance. Yeah. But with, with murder, that chance is taken away against that person's autonomy. Yeah. So it's, it's against their choice uh, and it's tragic. And, and if that's a repeated behavior in somebody, uh, y- you're left with this argument like, well, do we just support this person to sit and just be alive in a cell somewhere where they can really uh, kind of have all the creature comforts and, you know, read books and see the sunshine and, and just find jo- little joys in, in the rest of their life in that cell? Well, or, or should we just end it because they've been a terrible, terrible person? Well, yeah, I, <laughs> I guess, you know, maybe, maybe the, the, the way we imprison such people could, could be part of the problem. Maybe it should be something that actually isn't fun and has no uh, positive uh, aspects to it, that maybe it's, it's toil and labor. I mean, maybe the, the forced labor for murderers might be legitimate, I guess, in that case. Like, maybe, maybe you should have to work. Uh, I mean, if, you know. if the punishment fits the crime, sure, but if you're in there for tax evasion, I, I would hate to see you get the same exact sentence applied as the yeah. guy who murdered someone you know that's totally true there should definitely be a distinction there um (laughs) and like i'm actually of the of the uh opinion like we talked about in that episode on prison reform i'm I'm of the opinion that we should be enriching people in there and you know boosting them as far as trying to rehabilitate them and show them a better way of living and stuff like that rather than making it complete hell and then kicking them out to the street when they're done with their sentence with no money and this scar on their record. Oh, oh, I, I, I totally agree. But the, the point about it being complete hell would be for people who are murderers who are in there for life as some kind of punishment. Not that I think that we should always punish people. Because the thing is... Well, and not all murder like, sentences are life. No, but that's like, true. What's up with that? Yeah, that is a little weird. Um, but... Uh, yeah, because that kind of suggests that there's a value to human life that that's that's uh, quantifiable, and that you can stack it up uh, or something. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't believe that. I think one or a million, it's all terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, <sighs> boy. And then you have like the the murder by proxy. Like Charles Manson never killed anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it, there's there's really no argument that he shouldn't have been punished the way he was. Yeah. It's just it's just like when you start getting into these weird gray areas, it's like how do you how do you treat that when you could have a similar situation that's maybe not as grave, and then do you have to treat it the same way as you know you know it, it's really difficult. I, I can understand. yeah. And- that makes me think like, how is that any different than a politician convincing a bunch of soldiers to go overseas and kill a bunch of people they'd never met before? Uh, yeah. Is <laughs> what's the difference? Um, <laughs> so, Oh, that's yeah. That's oops. a whole other episode. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh man. I had a bunch of thoughts, but I, I, I kind of, so many things swimming around in my head right now about this. I kind of forgot them. Yeah. Uh, kind of going back to something like, so I, I've heard people argue that capital punishment, the value in it is that it brings closure to the victim's families. And I think, well, you know, I guess, I guess that's got its merit from the family's standpoint. Um, but they may not necessarily have a say in whether they, that's what they actually want or not because the state just decides. Um, but then they're not actually the victims. So if, if the point is to appease 
this other group of people uh, who's had somebody they know murdered by willfully killing another person, it, aren't they like complicit in murder or something at that point? I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's just like I have a lot of trouble logically wrapping my head around the, the or validating some of these concepts. Yeah. I, I can't say, you know, I can't speak from experience. I haven't had anyone close to me uh, murdered. So I, I, I don't know what kind of emotions or uh, desires for retribution come from having something, someone ripped from my life in that way by another person willfully yeah uh i i could totally understand this eye for an eye vengeance thing but so so many times i've heard people say that you know in the end it didn't bring that person back so you still have that hollow empty space like really it's it's on the you know on the one hand you can't just like let people do it and no. not have a consequence but what consequence could possibly equate to what they did? I mean, the only, the only thing I, I see that actually equates to that is them actually losing their life against their will, too. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, if you steal money from somebody or take somebody's property from them, I, I think that's something that's reversible. You could either return the property or pay them back for the loss of it. Um, but you can't bring back a life. So I, I, I kind of, at this point, I'm left with the conclusion that it's actually not possible and that every other course of action beyond that is simply some sort of retribution, some sort of, basically the intent is to, punish somebody for what they did because you cannot bring somebody back. There is absolutely nothing you could do. It doesn't matter if you murdered somebody, a, a close loved one, they could pay you a trillion dollars and it won't bring that person back. It doesn't matter. And no amount of money, no amount of work, no amount of effort can bring another person back. So that's the one thing that's absolutely impossible to undo. And so it's sort of, I, I guess it's kind of a dead end at that point. So then why is the, the, since there is no, nothing we can do, why is the only recourse to, to kill that person? And then if somebody does something bad like that, it, I think we, we discussed this idea that, that we don't analyze the why and whether there's actually something that could be done to improve the situation. Somebody does something really bad or makes a mistake um, it's, it's a more a matter of punishing somebody than it is a matter of figuring out why they did it and trying to undo it or improve the situation in some way. Yeah, that's a good point. Like it's not impossible in some cases to rehabilitate a murderer. Um, well, they did it for a reason. I mean, unless you believe that there is genuine evil and that like people are, a person could just be inherently evil, which I, I, that's I, I'd bit. say prove it to me. That, <laughs> that's what I would say is, is yeah. prove that there is such a thing as actual evil. I think there are conditions that lead people to do things. And I think those conditions have reasons and people do things for a reason. And, and I mean, if the purpose is to better society, wouldn't it be better to, to turn a person who used to be a murderer into a person who, I don't know, helps the homeless or, does something great to, to make things better. You know, I don't know. I, it's a tough one. Yeah, it, it really is. And, uh, I mean, I read, I read a book, you know, like a fiction book, uh, and it was, uh, called hominids. I think hmm. uh, Robert Sawyer is the author, I believe. And, and it was about, uh, this portal, opening up to another dimension and a Neanderthal comes through or Neanderthal, I should say. <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> don't be pedantic. 
<laughs> just trying to be accurate anthropologically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this Neanderthal comes through the portal, and he's all intelligent and stuff, and he's from a world where uh, Homo sapiens ended up dying out, and Homo, Homo neanderthalensis ended up uh, evolving, and their society was all utopian and stuff. But their one weird thing was that they all had these like built in things in their forearms that like kind of recorded everything they did. And, huh. and it, you could never turn it off and the state could subpoena to, to view it if there was uh, an accusation of a crime that was committed and then they'd have irrefutable evidence that it happened. And the punishment for any crime whatsoever was castration. Whoa! Hey! Oh, man. <laughs> so their, their theory, <laughs> and, I, and I've heard this theory before, is that uh, there's a genetic component to evil, I'll just say. I, I don't like that word, but, you know, there's a ge genetic component to this, you know, this evil tendency to commit crime. And if you you know, did away with that person's ability to uh, procreate any further, like they may already have, but um, they, they accounted for that in the story by castrating their uh, relatives as well <laughs> to wow. further deter a person from committing crime because it would affect their loved ones. Uh, <laughs> basically, like that, that was kind of like the, the dystopian flip on it was huh. that uh, if you commit a crime, it's like a sins of the father thing. Like it, a bunch of people pay for it uh, and you don't get locked away necessarily, but your bloodline dies with you. <laughs> wow. That's, that's an interesting concept. And that actually kind of, speaking of uh, fiction tales, that that is kind of reminiscent of that episode of Star Trek Next Generation where they land on that super awesome, peaceful planet uh, that everybody's all happy and stuff, but the punishment for every single crime, even going into a, a an area you're not supposed to go and crushing the flowers, is punishable by death. Yep. Every single crime. <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, that's that's how we achieve peace. Is any bad thing you do is punishable by death. And that's an interesting idea. I, I don't think it would play out like it does in fiction. I think uh, human beings are resourceful and they'll find a way to twist it to their own ends. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting idea. Well, yeah, like they'll just Picard it and yeah. tongue their way out of it. <laughs> <laughs> there can be no justice. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But then, you know, here's the thing. If you're, you're capable in your lifespan of committing more than one crime. So what, if you're castrated once, and I, I wonder what they do with women, I guess you could be castrated. Um, uh, yeah, hysteric hysterectomy. Yeah, yeah. Just, I think of only one thing when I think of castration. I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the stuff of nightmares. Um, but but it, once, once that's happened, what happens if you commit a second crime? Hmm. Recastrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah well i mean you know it's a, it's a work of fiction and you know science fiction is always about analyzing the the human condition and kind of talking about the what ifs and, and things like that and it's that's it really interesting though yeah I, man i i, I mean there there's quite a lot of things we could probably keep going on about um but it, it's like really hot up here so i'm like totally sweating <laughs> and, um yeah what, you sweating because you feel guilty did you murder someone uh, uh i i plead the fifth uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh the fifth amendment <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. yes i did it but i can't say so because that would incriminate me <laughs> oh man yeah we should we definitely need to come back to this one again more um because i'm sure there's going to be like other angles and comments that yield new directions to to discuss and 
I really, really, really want to hear what people have to say about this. Because, yeah. you know, I know this is fiercely divided. Um, there's a lot of different ways of thinking. There's people who think absolutely black and white about it. Like they absolutely should not be put to death. They totally should be. And there's people in the middle. There's people that feel ambivalent. Like, you know, I want to hear those things. And not, not just like that you feel that, but why? The justification, like what, what it is that, that, why you believe that way. Because I think it'd be yeah. interesting to further the discussion. Um, and, and, you know, maybe, maybe carry on kind of what we've talked about. Like what, what could we do if we don't, let, let's say you're a person who either is kind of on the fence or you're a person who believes, no, we should, capital punishment should not be allowed. What do you think should be done? and why yeah like i i don't think it's a thing that anyone should really be on one side or the other about i i think it's something that really needs to be deeply analyzed situation by situation yeah uh, but unfortunately the way our system the court system is built it's not designed to do that it's sort of a machine to churn out uh you know convictions or whatever it it it's yeah, a long time ago, maybe, and and perhaps it was based on ancient systems that did actually analyze everything individually, objectively, and you know tried to produce a fair outcome. Um, but <laughs> that's not the way it is nowadays, sadly. But you know, yeah. uh, we did discuss a solution to that, or at least a, something that could mitigate it, which is jury nullification. Um, that's true. That's a that's a good tie-in, and yeah. uh, and and of course it, the the uh, tried and true just start doing away with the stupid crimes like like drug yeah. offenses and prostitution and stuff like that, and uh, maybe you'll free up a little more time to really focus on the important shit. Yeah, exactly, and, and that does that. Actually, this this whole this topic ties into quite a number of things that we've already discussed, like uh, police brutality. You know, everybody knows that it's absolutely wrong that some of the things that are happening. But yeah, you could scream all day long about how it's wrong or try to change what the cops actually do. But the reason they're doing those things, by and large, is because of these laws, the, the, the victimless crime laws, and because they're encouraged to get people because of them. And you get rid of that and poof. Now you're only left with the worst of the worst as far as crimes go. Like there's actual a, crimes. There's another angle I, I realized we forgot to touch on. And, and maybe this would be kind of its own episode that maybe we could invite uh, Godly Mind State back. But uh, yeah, there's the racial angle to this because there's a lot of people that feel that there's, you know, this disproportion, disproportionate amount of uh, people of color in the prison system and death row and stuff like that. And there may be some, some bias against them at work. And that's, that's uh, something you got to consider too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, a lot of these things aren't, this isn't the, that, that disproportionate quantity of people in prison isn't necessarily a bunch of rapists and murderers, but they're there for victimless crimes. Yeah. And, and yeah, that would be, That'd be an interesting thing to discuss, actually. Yeah, you got a good point there. All right. Well, I guess we uh, covered quite a bit there, and uh, yeah, <laughs> even like we were kind of scattered a, a little bit. It, it all, it all came together. Yeah, it's just because it's so bloody hot up here. Like, ah, oh, geez. Well, there's a, there's a lot to this. Uh, it's it's no small subject. No, it's not. And and uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, you know think little of it you know um because we're i think we've we kind of hit the end of the episode but i you know this is something i think deserves a lot more discussion um and and probably from a few different angles so i absolutely want to come back to this and do a couple follow-up videos about it yeah but i don't want to overwhelm people because we we actually kind of said quite a lot of stuff here and there's a lot to absorb so so maybe it's probably a good point to end for now yeah 
So uh, keep the conversation going and uh, leave your comments and uh, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, get your buddies' comments on there too. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then, of course, don't forget the song on the way out. Oh, yeah. I hope you like it. All right, everybody. Have a good day. It's Deep Sin Diving. Empire Planet, Machines in Control. Corporation at the head of the console. Smokestack Factory, grinding the drones. Electrical monstrosity.